What is a hero? To me, it's an individual who puts service before self, a person who dedicates their life to helping others. Heroes come in many forms, firefighters, police officers, first responders, and our brave troops. They are the selfless men and women who serve their neighbors, communities, and this amazing country we call America. I'm Dan Ball. I served my country in the United States Air Force. Then I spent 25 years serving the neighbors and communities I lived in by telling their stories. Now I'm on a new mission in life, traveling the country, discovering what fuels these heroes' minds, bodies, and souls. Fire in the hole! This is Hungry Heroes. On this edition of Hungry Heroes, we're cruising into Southern California, more specifically Riverside County, the fourth largest in the Golden State, with a population of nearly two and a half million. The region is filled with rolling hills and valleys along with majestic mountains. The county also boasts the famous Joshua Tree National Park, dozens of vineyards and wineries, and is even the home to the Stagecoach and Coachella Music Festivals, making this county a very large and diverse area to police. I'm Dan, I'm the heroes we're gonna meet up with on this episode make up the Riverside County Sheriff's Department Canine Unit. We'll get up close and personal with the deputies, plus we'll meet their four-legged furry partners who patrol the streets of Riverside County with them. Our heroes will show us how they train these canine crusaders. We'll run through a few scenarios that the teams face on a regular basis. Then I'll get suited up. They'll show me what it's like when a canine officer takes a bite out of crime. We'll meet up with a local barbecue king who loves supporting his local law enforcement. Then we'll sit down and break bread with our heroes to find out what fuels their minds, bodies, and souls. But first, as always, we've got to stop and check out a few of the local hot spots in the area that our heroes like to frequent when they're out on patrol. First up, a family-owned restaurant named Luke's. It's a Friday night, grab the bike. I uh, came up to the town of Temecula, California. Now this resides in Riverside County. We're gonna be profiling the Riverside County Sheriff's Department canine unit. And this is a place they love to hang out. It's actually on top of this building. This is Luke's. Hi. Hi, my name is Dan. I'm Kelly, I'm the owner. How can I help Kelly, you? Kelly, nice to meet you. We're gonna be meeting up tomorrow with some guys at the Riverside County Sheriff's Department Canine Unit. And they said when they're in Temecula patrolling with their dogs, this is one of their top spots. They love to stop at Luke's. That is awesome to hear. Let me show you around so you can decide where you wanna sit. Wow. And here's our beautiful sunset. This is gorgeous, I love yes. it. Guys, can you see this view? So this is, they just call it Old Town Temecula, right? Old Town right? Temecula, yep. Beautiful. Wow, cool place. So much good stuff. I like to have the owner tell me. Okay. What's two of the best things you make and bring those instead of me picking off the menu? I've never been here. So. I would be happy to do that. What, I have what two what I good need? ones. I've got an ahi taco. It's a huge rice shell. Okay. And the wham bam thank you Ooh, jam. The one I, I saw that. That's a burger. It is. Everything we have here is organic, grass fed made from scratch, even the bread, ah, it is. Let's do it. And I think you're gonna be quite happy with these choices. Oh Wham, bam. My. As you see, <laughs> it's a huge chunk. Uh, wow. We got jalapenos, we got cream cheese, homemade jelly, we have extra jelly. Do you see this? <laughs> this is our ahi taco. It's got our sriracha, it's got our Whoa. wasabi, avocado, ginger, jalapenos. That is amazing yeah. looking. Let's just delve into this, folks, shall we? And look at the layers of yumminess. Oh my. This wham bam thank you jam burger, there's so much going on. Delicious burger. I think it's the jam. Yeah, for sure. Woo, okay, those jalapenos are getting to me. Look at the detail. With the little wasabi heart and the Luke's, I love it. Look at the ahi, good quality. Love the red onion, they got fresh cilantro going on. Wow, fresh, crisp, and then at the end, spicy. The crunch of this unique shell really sets this apart. What a great dish. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Oh, you and I want to thank you for always taking care of the local cops. Because uh, they spoke very so highly much. of you. They're a pleasure to come on. I love having them in here. Love their dogs. Oh, the dogs are welcome. Oh, the dogs are welcome. Well, I'm going to get up close and personal tomorrow with those doggies, so I'll tell them you said hello. I right now, i got to read some shut eye. Perfect. Thank you way. so much. Appreciate it. Bye. Have a great night. Cool little village. 
before we meet up with our heroes today, they told me I had to stop by this place and check it out. This is a local eatery called The Local Provisions, but it's got a really cool story and connection to the heroes we're profiling in this episode, because the owner, Gabe, actually used to be a canine handler with the exact same department we're profiling. Let's go in and meet him, grab something to eat. Hey, are you Gabe? Yes, I am. Gabe, I'm Dan. Hey, Dan. Nice Welcome. to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've heard good things from the guys in the canine department hey, very about good. the food and you too. Thank you. Can I grab something to eat? Yes, sir. Come on in. All right, let's go. First and foremost, before we even get to the food, riding into this place, it's called Vale Headquarters. So this was like an old school ranch or something 100 years ago? Yeah, originally this was the foreman's house. This is where the foreman and his family lived. And yeah, it's got a lot of history to it. So what are you known for here at the local provisions? Probably best known for our lobster grilled cheese and our Korean tacos. Okay, can I have one of each? Sure, let's do it. Done. Beautiful. Okay, it smells great. This is a triple lobster grilled cheese on a ciabatta. We got garlic aioli, provolone, greer. This uh, Korean pork tacos, you got your pulled pork, Korean barbecue sauce, um, chipotle, grilled pineapple, pickled onions, you got your cotija cheese, and some herbs on the top. There's something about pickled red onions with barbecue. It just goes together. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Right. Thanks, Mingo. That's a great taco. The pulled pork with that chipotle sauce. Then you got that pickled taste, but then the grilled pineapple. Really what sets it apart. All right, next. Look at this thing. Oh my goodness. Lobster grilled cheese. Oh. I just want to take this home, Gabe, and cuddle up with it. <laughs> I mean, wow. This is just buttery, cheesy goodness. That's good. The guys with the canine unit told me that you used to be part of the department with them, and now you're a restaurant owner. How did that whole thing happen? Owning my own business has always been kind of a, a dream of mine, and I love the community here, the Vail headquarters. Uh, to me, it's a community within a community. Right. I know that it's a big change, but I feel like I'm still serving my community, but maybe in a different way. Gabe, thank you. All right, So Dan. much, brother. Um, anything you want me to talk to the guys about? Any advice before my day of training? Uh, take the bite high. Take the bite high. Yep. Who said I'm taking a bite? So with Gabe's vice in mind, take the bite high, I rolled out a bit concerned about what I'd signed up for. But now it was time to meet up with our heroes and get to work. Hey, how's it going, man? Good, sir. How are you? Good. You Deputy Noise? I am, sir. I'm Dan. I'm Heath. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you, brother. So I understand we're going to learn a little bit about what it takes to be a canine cop today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to run you through the gamut. So welcome to uh, SCB. This is our, uh, our headquarters here, Special Enforcement Bureau. And uh, the canine team is under that umbrella. The guys are in there right now briefing up. Uh, Sarge is giving them a little bit of a game plan of today, what's going to happen. And what you're going to put me through. Absolutely. Well, let's absolutely. Go meet the team. Outstanding, Great. sir. Dan, we're going to take you up here to the briefing room where uh, the guys are discussing what we're going to do today. Wow. You've got all the bells and whistles and some big toys right here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so these are our bear casts that we use for uh, our armored vehicles that uh, we'll use for SWAT operations. Uh, we house them here. we got to be ready all the time. Uh, yeah, 24 seven. Yes, sir. Hey guys, how's it going? James, nice to meet you. Hey, David. David, nice to meet you, Dan. Patrick. Patrick, pleasure, man. Brent. Brent, Dan, nice to meet you. Jesse, sorry to interrupt the meeting. Jason. Jason, Sarge, I'm Dan. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you guys. Coming up on Hungry Heroes, now that we've met our team of heroes, we got to warm up the dogs and along with the deputies. We'll put the basics of what we've learned into action with a real world scenario as we release the hounds on the bad guys. Don't go anywhere. Hungry Heroes is just getting started. If you look around, there are heroes everywhere, men and women who risk their lives to protect others. I'm proud to sponsor Hungry Heroes to recognize this passion to protect, defend and serve. I'm Dave Mortosh. At Mortosh Financial, we protect another aspect of your life, your money. We believe in safety while still getting solid growth and lifetime retirement income if needed. No one wants to outlive their money. Please call the number at the bottom of your screen or go to my website, mortoshfinancial.com. Welcome back. On this episode of Hungry Heroes, we've traveled to Southern California to the fourth largest county, Riverside. Along the way, 
we stopped by two local eateries, local provisions. Before that, Luke's in the historic Old Town area of Temecula. We then met up with our heroes, and now it's time to get to work. For today's lineup and our training, we're gonna start off with some basic obedience. Once we're done and the dogs are warmed up, we'll go ahead and do a short pursuit, running across the field, and we'll use a muzzle dog for the apprehension on that one. We'll go ahead and work on doing a vehicle extraction with a barricaded suspect. And once we're all done with that, we'll enjoy some good barbecue. All right, and that's it. Let's go, guys. I'm gonna have everyone go outside, muzzle up your dogs. We'll meet out in this back concrete area. Like an athlete, you gotta stretch them out, loosen up their joints before we start putting them through some strenuous activities. You actually need to do that with TV hosts, too. Like, I, you, you gotta, I, <laughs> you gotta stretch it out, you gotta stretch. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and warm up these dogs. Basic obedience, like I said, it's the foundation work of this dog training. Sure. These dogs have to understand that they have to be obedient, they have to do what we say on our command. This is life or death for them and you. Correct. And forward! Sit! About turn! Have a double time. And down. So this is where we do the serpentine. Dog weeds in and out. Dogs have to be neutral to one another. We bring them as close as possible. They should not fight. They should just perfectly get along. We're going to do what we call a long down. Okay. Is where we leave the dog by himself. Push the leash over his back. Only the handler that calls for his specific dog okay. should recall. The rest should stay in place. There's one. There's two. There's three. Look at him. He is laser focused. And there's the last one. So now, Sarge, we've got bad guy. Enter stage left. Hi, bad guy. Talk to me about this bite suit. Um, he will still feel some pain. He will feel pressure all through the suit, but it will not puncture his skin. How many have you done? Do you like even this? know how many? <laughs> Dozens, no. hundreds, hundreds. hundreds. Every guy here has probably done hundreds. hundreds. Wow. Have him sit. Okay. See, look how cool, calm, oh, wow. relax. Now, what we're going to do is he's going to react off the agitator's movement. OK, so this bad guy is about to attack a cop. On you. Oh, ah. Wow. He didn't get close to hitting the death <laughs> And they don't want to let go. Well, and he's not until we tell him that it's time to get let go. So we make sure that we have full control of the canine before we let go. Yep. <laughs> he's like, that one hurt. So he's going to go ahead and give him the verbal command that it's OK to bite him. Right, but he's just waiting. He's just waiting. Until he. And that's amazing. part of the obedience. We might do a one minute where the dog just basically guards the suspect. Right. But to build up on the obedience, we might do 90 seconds next, and then two minutes. Well, see, like right now, we're waiting a little bit longer. Now he's starting to get antsy. But that's real world scenario. It is, exactly. We can be dealing with the suspect for five to 10 minutes or to 30 minutes to get him to surrender. And at a time, the dog has to be obedient. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, man. <laughs> Oh, all right, <laughs> boy. So as you see, Dan, you come over there. This is what we're looking for is we want a good full mouth bite. You can see he can't fit any more of that suit inside his mouth. He's not going to come off that. He's not going to come off that bite. I can pick him up. I can do whatever to him pretty he much, and he's going to stay in there. They're very under control during this time. You can see his tail's wagging, so he's happy. He's having a good time. Hi, Poos. Wow. Lahi. So, Sarge, I keep hearing different languages as the deputies give commands to the canines. Can you explain that? Yes. Because the dogs are coming from the European countries, um, our commands are typically within three languages, Dutch, German, or Czech. So, obviously, the deputies have to learn another language as well. Correct, yeah, for those commands. Smart cops, smart dogs. Yep. OK, so in this scenario, I've got Deputy Cisneros. We are actually chasing someone. And what's going to happen then? Well, he's going to uh, 
go to a dead end and then he's going to exit the vehicle. He's going to take off running from us. And that's when we're going to do a, a canine takedown. So the dog actually like runs and yeah. hits him and knocks him down. Correct. Okay, let's hit it. Let's roll. We're coming to a dead end. Stand by, guys. He might be foot battling here. Oh, he's slowing down, guys. Slowing down. Up. Oh, he's foot battling. He's foot battling. He's foot battling. Hey, Sheriff Harvey, oh. stop! I'll send my dog! Oi, Baba. How'd that feel? <laughs> <laughs> so coming up next, they thought it was time for me to get suited up. I'll be playing the bad guy, leading our brave heroes on a high-speed chase that ends up with me cornered and no place to go. Then a bit later, we'll sit down, break bread with them, and find out what drives these heroes. That's all straight ahead on Hungry Heroes. So don't get your fur in a bunch. We'll be right back. This is Dave Mortash. We're doing it again. We are honored to be working with the Travis Mills Foundation to help injured vets and their families. I believe this is the best run charity for vets that I've ever seen. My wife Sophie and I are matching up to $500,000 in donations to this great foundation. We need your help. Please go to our website, travismillsfoundation.org slash Dave to donate to this great cause. We match your donation immediately. That's travismillsfoundation.org slash Dave. Hunger Heroes is back, and on this edition, we're in Southern California, hanging out with the brave men and their four-legged canine partners that make up the Riverside County Sheriff's Department canine unit. The deputies thought it'd be a good idea if I get geared up and see firsthand what it's like to take a bite. All right, so this next scenario, we're going we're gonna to be utilizing one of these, and uh, you're up. It's time to get in. What do you mean I'm up? You're going to be the bad guy. <laughs> I don't know if I, uh, did we pay up our insurance? Really? You guys have done this hundreds of times, everybody said? Hundreds of times. That's what I heard. And we're going to have Hyde come in and say hi to you, and then he's going to bring you to me. The dog's going to bring me to you. Yeah, and you can try to stop him if you want, but we'll see how that works out for you. All right, let's go. So uh, it's going to hurt? Yes. So you want to kind of mimic, um, you know, natural human movement. <laughs> they always say like, you know, if you're about to get hit, about to get in a car accident, there's always that old myth. So is tightening up better for pain or just let it loose when he bites? Just let it happen. Let it happen. Don't go and tighten up the muscle. No, just, just let, let it, it happen. Just let it like happen. Like just loose dead hamburger meat. Yep. Okay. No, All right. Take care good. of it. All right. <laughs> This is kind of mimicking a pursuit, so we're gonna chase you. You're the bad guy. Got it. Um, and then you're gonna refuse to come out of the vehicle, which sometimes bad guys do. Have a seat up in here, okay. and then I'll kind of walk you through what's gonna happen. It's fun in a suit. You've just been in a pursuit. Yep. You've been enveloped by our armored vehicles. You can't go anywhere. You're completely defeated, but you don't wanna come out. And so we're gonna have to physically remove you. So I'm gonna send my dog in to bring you to me. All right. So, 
Suspect, come out towards me. Keep coming. Keep coming. Walk to your left. Get out of here. Stop no right way. there. All right, go down to the ground. Suspect, go down to the ground. I got positive control. Hide. Post! Lie. Yeah. Good stuff. <clears throat> Woo! Can't wait to see what that's going to look like tomorrow. Woo! <sighs> I would not want this job, let me tell you. Um, and this is why we got to remember to respect our brave law enforcement officers. Whether they're canine officers or not, this job's hard enough. Even though I know this is a controlled environment, we've taken all the safety precautions, I've got the equipment on, your heart, yeah, still gets pumping because a almost 90 pound dog is charging at you and then locks on to you. Guys, thank you so much. Learned a lot today about what it takes to be a canine handler and what you guys go through out there with your dogs. Really appreciate it. I think we all kind of worked up an appetite. I'm hungry. Yeah. How about yeah. you? I'm, I'm very hungry. Can As we get some to Yeah. I got, a, I got a friend of mine over here that's uh, coming up from uh, Norco, California with uh, Speakeasy Barbecue. Ooh, and you hooked up the catering. I did. I did. This is, uh, there he is. let me introduce Let's you to Let's go chow, him. guys. Come on. I want to introduce you to my buddy. This is Jared from Speakeasy hey, Barbecue. Jared. Nice to meet Damn, you. Damn, pleasure to meet you, brother. Nice to meet you, Dan. So you guys are friends, and how did we uh, connect here where you're supporting law enforcement? Well, uh, Anoyas is is, is a, a regular at our restaurant, <laughs> but um, our restaurant was birthed out of COVID and all the chaos and yep, shutdowns yep. and everything. So I lost my full-time job and uh, started out of the backyard selling barbecue. Uh, law enforcement, first responders, military, um, we have a you know, soft spot for them. And nice. What'd you bring everybody today? Pulled pork sandwiches. Right on. Jared, thank you so much, man. You betcha. For My supporting pleasure. them. I really appreciate it. And thank you for doing this today. Anytime. All right. God bless you. Start pulling this pork. Can you guys see this? So freaking juicy. Moist. During lunchtime, it was time to get serious with our heroes and find out why they've dedicated their lives to the service of others. Dear Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for... Dan and his crew coming out with us. Um, keep uh, the men and women safe today. Thank you for Jared and the Speakeasy Barbecue for supplying us with this uh, delicious lunch. And Lord, please watch over the deputies and the service men and women that are out there today putting their lives on the line. In your name we pray, amen. 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 Heath, let's start with you. Why'd you want to do this job? Again, it's something that I'll always go back to. Dan and I say it's, a, it's, it's not a want to do this job, it's, it's a calling to do this job. I was working in a civilian job after I got out of the Marine Corps, and uh, just one night it hit me like a ton of bricks, and from that day on I was called to, called yeah, to service. Called to serve. I started out in Blythe as, as a deputy, and we really needed a dog out there uh, for the, the drug aspect, which we haven't really talked about today, is we also use the dogs to locate, you know, narcotics and you know, the opportunity came up to get a dog to do that, and I put in for it and did a bunch of patrol work out there and did good things. I saw the tails wagging all day while they're biting people. All play to them. It's fun for them. Yeah, and if I'm having a bad day, he, he's not, so he cheers me up. One of the calls that stands out, everybody assumed because there was surveillance on this house that there's nobody in there, but we're just gonna double check. And I set my dog inside, and he circled a couch the crazy thing about it was the suspect was hiding underneath the couch with a hammer. And he had literally carved out and hollowed out the entire couch. Without the use of the dog, none of us would have found the guy. How does that feel when somebody walks up and says, thank you, you're my hero, or thank you for your service, or thanks what you did for me? Uh, honestly, I don't really feel like I'm a hero, you know, a superhero wearing a cape and all that. But and when I see kids, I think of my kids, and I try to do best job I can do as if I was working for them. My dad was a, a LA County, he retired as a sergeant um, for 25 years. So growing up, I knew I always wanted to be a cop. When we would get together at my dad, at my grandparents' house, um, my dad's stories were always better than my fireman <laughs> uncle's stories. Right. So I always, growing up, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I know this rivalry. Yeah. My brother was yeah. a firefighter and that's how we came up with this whole show. Uh, I didn't sign up for this job and I'm sure nobody here did to be called a hero or to be looked at as a hero. Um, 
I don't see myself as a hero. Um, That's okay, I, we'll call you that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I learned a lot about what it takes to be a canine cop. Heat, thank you so much for setting all of this up. Uh, real quick, got a surprise for you guys. I know that this job is hard. It requires a lot of equipment, a lot of training, as I learned today from you. Uh, and these dogs are invaluable to what you do. They keep the community safe. And more importantly, they keep you guys safe out there. So thanks to my bosses at One America News, Herring Broadcasting family. Here's a check. Take the money. Buy new vests for the dogs, buy safety gear, Fallen Memorial Fund for any of the dogs or handlers or anybody that's been lost. Use it, put it to good use. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. And I got something for you. From oh, our team right to on. you, this is our challenge coin. Ah, thank you. I will put this right in a place of honor. Outstanding, sir. Thank, thank you. you, guys. God bless you. Stay safe out there. Keep the rubber down and the paint up. Don't forget to honor the heroes among us.